Greetings, brethren. My name is Alicia Jack, and I will be your moderator for this class. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing you proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were later on incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Since that time, we have established brand schools throughout the United States, Canada, Africa, and several other foreign countries. Our local brand school was established here in Kingston, Jamaica in the year 1988, and our Spanish Town branch in the year 1994. The Dean of the Spanish Town branch is Dr. Donna Mitchell and the president is Dr. Leon Jack. In this school, we teach by the true, correct, and original name and title of our heavenly father, the word or son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our heavenly father is Yahweh, it has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title for the word our son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The true name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is the title that our creator Yahweh chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your path in a good dictionary or an encyclopedia would show proof that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any letters or characters in their alphabet that would produce the sound made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. Therefore, such names as Jesus, Jah, Jehovah are impossible and incorrect rendering of the true, correct and original name of our heavenly father and his son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, invisible, and inconceivable. Yahweh is the ultimate source, the infinite and immaculate substance. He is the limits and bounds of everything. Now, here we have Yahweh symbolized on the mosaic chart in its pure spirit state as a cloud. However, Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize or to depict himself because a cloud has no particular descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this orange fiery cloud all around the edges of this chart to show how that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, does everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word, our son, a super incorporeal being or a great heavenly anthropomorphic being. This is having shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. 
In this form, he can only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua, the Messiah, whom the world erroneously calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation and we must know this name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be added by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the threefold tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh later on instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we go about showing proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In our school, we have 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives, and they are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. Okay, so for this afternoon's lecture, I would like to ask Adela Channer to do our prayer. And uh, <clears throat> Dr. Leonard Allen, could you give us a song? And the scripture lesson is taken from 2 Peter, the third chapter. And I would like to ask uh, Hiya St. Linda, if you could read that for me, please. Thanks. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Are you hearing me? Okay. Let us bow our hearts and our minds in prayer. 
Oh, Heavenly Father, Yahweh, we thank you again for giving us this opportunity for having another one of these spiritual lectures. When you keep revealing your vision to us and the revelation. And we also thank you for keeping the virgin safe and thank you for helping us to keep the faith. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Today I want to sing, We're Blessed to Belong to El. The hope of the future is clear to be seen through the teaching of Henry Kinley. It speaks of the vision and it reveals the gospel to you and me. His vision reveals, his vision reveals the gospel to you and me. Beginning at Moses, your pattern is clear, threefold, but a unity. He king of all ages, and we will see he's king of eternity. King of each age, king of each age, king of eternity. The law and the prophets point to Yeshua. They tell us that he is the one. Yahweh is father entitled El, and Yahshua is his son. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Yahshua is his son. We'll know our creator for that is his plan, and in his spirit we dwell. Now that we know him, we're satisfied. We're blessed to belong to El. Blessed to belong, blessed to belong. We're blessed to belong to El. Hallelujah. Beautiful, Lenore. Beautiful. And joy. Praise Josh. <laughs> oh, good night, brethren. Um, I'll be reading Second Peter three from the Holy Name Bible, using the Holy New Testament, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts. Second Peter the third. This second apostle. That's the apostle? What word is that? Second epistle. It's a, oh. a letter. Well, it isn't the okay, it's spelled wrong there. Okay. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both with our star of your pure minds by way of remembrance, that he may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Redeemer and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For, for since the father fell asleep, all things continue as they were from beginning of the creation. For this that willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of Yahweh the heavens were uphold, and the herd standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the herd, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of wicked men. But Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. One day is one day is with Yahweh of the thousand years, 
and a thousand years as one day. Yahweh is not slack concerning his promise, as some men call slackness, but is long suffering for toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night, in which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fever and heat. The hurt also and the works that therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought he to be in all holy conduct and righteousness, looking for and hasting unto, unto the coming of the day of Yahweh, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fever and heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven on a new earth, wherein dwell righteousness. More? Where, wherefore, beloved, seeing that we look for such things, be diligent that he may not be found of him in peace without spot and blemish, blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Savior is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, art written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things are to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. He therefore, beloved, seeing he know these things before, beware lest he also, being led away with the hero of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace, and in knowledge of our Redeemer and Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, to him be glory, both now and forever. That was Second Peter, the third chapter. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Adela Chana, for the prayer, and Dr. Allen for the song, and uh, Hyacinth for the scripture lesson. <laughs> I would like to ask Dr. Bernica Robertson to be our scripture reader. And uh, is Dr. Byron Crary online? No? All right. Hold it, hold it. Okay, you're here, Doc. All right. Are you available to speak? Yes, Doc. Right, okay, praise Yashua. So um, Dr. Barranker will be our first speaker. Good evening, Doc. Uh, good evening, brethren and friends. And welcome to another lecture given to you by Yahweh Elohim through his son Yashua through the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research Incorporated. Now, oh, this is a school and it's not a church. Are there any first time visitors online? Not that I know. Okay, um, Doc, it's always a good, good to run the name, the gospel. You know, we speak of things that we know. So let's. Get into the name. You know that the true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua the Messiah. You see. And um, it's not Lord and God or Allah, Buddha, what we used to think. You see. And um, it's the love of Yahweh who gave us his name. Yes, sir. Um, and the gospel, because that is what uh, Yahweh is using 
to save his subject. Who obeys him, by the way, you see? All right, so let's get into it. In Exodus, the third chapter, Exodus 3, I want it to be read. Um, because Moses was the first one who got the name of the burning bush. You see, um, you know something? Get me Exodus 3 and verse 1, Doc. Exodus 3 and verse 1. Yeah. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, mm -hmm. of Midian. Yeah. You want King James or Holy Name? No, let's get into the Holy Name. Since um, there's no... um. Visitors. The priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to mm -hmm. Oreb. Yeah. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out mm -hmm. of the midst of a bush. Mm -hmm. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. No, just a minute. That. No, before coming to class, this vision and revelation, we used to think that it was a literal bush out there. But Moses really was appreciating a vision and revelation. You see, yeah, I was giving, giving him this vision. Later on, he'll get the revelation. Continue reading. Yes. Not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. Mm -hmm. And yet when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, Yahweh Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the bush. No, just said, a minute again. No, this is it again. Us coming to class and learning from this vision and revelation. No, you come to class, you have to be wanting to learn of Yahweh Elohim. It says, when, Mo, when Yahweh saw that Moses turned aside, that is when he's going to communicate with him. No, you know, no, if you are interested in this vision and revelation that was given to, to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, and this is handed down to us. Now, it's Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua, is teaching. Now, we will have somebody who will come into class. Um, we'll say now late because we are here from, some of us is here from 20 years ago and so. But because of the one who is interested in learning of some something about Yahshua. You see, Yahweh in this later time now, Yahweh just opened their understanding because of their interest. Because listen, what is being said here. When Yahweh saw that Moses turn aside, read that. Yes, turn aside to see. Mm -hmm. Yahweh Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the bush. That's and when Yahweh called him out of the midst of the bush. So when he turned aside from looking after the sheep, Yahweh called unto him. And continue reading. And said, Moses, Moses. And he mm -hmm. said, here am I. Yeah, right. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Mm -hmm. Put off the shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Continue reading. Moreover, he said, I am the Elohim of thy father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim. Hey, yeah, we can still frighten us, you see. All right, read up. <laughs> and Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people 
who are in Egypt and have heard their cry mm -hmm. by reason of their taskmasters. Um, um, I'm sure Yahweh hear our cry. So, um, you know, one of the things that Dr. Kinnan said, um, how is Yahweh going to judge the world by that man who we are being? Where's that scripture again? You see, how is Yahweh going to judge the world by that man who is, um, I think it's, it's in Acts 17. Act 17, it's Act 17, um, uh, 31. 31. By that man who we are then, you see, right? And this is it by him, you see, preaching unto others about his true name, you see, right? So get down to the get down to 10 now, Doc. Right. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto Elohim, Who am I? Mm -hmm. That I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Mm -hmm. And he said, certainly I will be with thee. No, and certainly. Of a sure. Certainly I will be with thee. No. One of the things that we are to ever learn. I guess we have to learn this. The ever presence of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. You see. I yeah. guess we have to learn this because we think that Yahweh is above the sun, moon, and star or is not ever present in everything that we are doing. You see? Mm -hmm. He's ever present in every little details, every aspect of our lives. We should really observe this. You see? He said, certainly, I will be with thee. Mm -hmm. Continue reading. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. Mm -hmm. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. Right. Mm -hmm. Read. Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, the Elohim of your fathers that sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? So what is Elohim's name? Because we know that Elohim is not a name. Elohim is a pluralistic title. It means word or son. You see. Uh, read that. And Elohim said unto Moses, Aya Asha Aya. Mm -hmm. Thus, and thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I will be at sent me unto you. Right. And Elohim said moreover unto Moses, mm -hmm. Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh, right. the Elohim of your fathers. Mm -hmm. Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob had sent me unto you. This is my name forever. Mm -hmm. And this is my memorial unto all generations. Okay, now. Now, we have learned that here in, um, in Jamaica here, we have learned that, that the true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, Elohim, you see, through his son, Yahshua. Now, there's others who preach this here in Jamaica mm -hmm. and even the United States. They preach this and they've gone off to something else, you see. Mm -hmm. Right. 
No. Um, the thing it must happen. It really must happen. It have to happen. You see, but being obedient to Yahshua the Messiah, who is our true husband. You see, if you look up that word husband, who is our true husband, who is our true father. You see, we know that. We have also have that name also because if you should know who your husband is. Yes. You should know the name of your husband. No, he said, this is my name, not names, forever. Why? You see. Now, if you look up that word forever, it does not have a beginning. It does not have an end. Why? So when does it change to something else? You see. Okay. It has never changed something else. You see. Now, even the children of Israel, Moses. You see. And remember when I said, Yahweh can still, he can still shake you. He can still frighten you, although you have a good relationship with him. This name Yahweh was not known unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No. Yahweh has repeated this several times in the, um, with Moses. So get me the scripture that um, Exodus 6. Uh, you know something? Start from one. Start from Exodus, one. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Exodus 6 and 1. Right. When Yahweh went said unto Moses, mm -hmm. now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. Right. For Strong hand mm -hmm. shall he let them go, mm -hmm. and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, as mm -hmm. El Shaddai. As El Shaddai. As El Shaddai. Go on up. But by my name, Yahweh, was I not known to them. Okay. So Yahweh said, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they did not know his name. You see. Yeah. But by his name, Yahweh, they did not know his name. Right. So there's no book of... Um, Abraham didn't write anything about Yahweh. You see. Enoch didn't write anything about, you know, you have the book of Enoch and all of that. You have the, they didn't write anything about Yahweh. This is the first man Yahweh have to record something about him. That's Moses, that we have on record. You see, that's Moses. So they didn't know, you know, there's one part in the, when in Genesis there where it says, and Abraham called this place uh, what? Yahweh Nisi. We know it's not that, no. No, that's not right. Because Abraham did not know anything about the name Yahweh. Right. Anyway, get me Isaiah 45 and 5. Back. Did you also want the definition for husband? Hey, that's good, Doc. Thank you very much. Okay, let me see. Thank you very much. I said, I said, I have husband, a man joined to another person in marriage, a male spouse, mm -hmm. manager or steward as of a household, mm -hmm. a, a prudent, archaic, a prudent, thrifty manager. Uh, husbanded or husbanding to use sparingly or economically conserve husband one's energy to become a husband too okay to become a husband too yeah that means like to husband somebody yeah uh, i may not have what you want no um you know sometimes that uh, you look in the um in the Webster Dictionary. 
the web? You see, sometimes sometime it's not there on, on the internet. Okay. You see. Yeah. Right. Anyway, Doc, thank you very much. Could you get Isaiah 45 and 5? Isaiah 45, verse 5. I am Yahweh. There is none else. Mm -hmm. There is no Elohim beside me. Mm -hmm. I wanted thee, thou, 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 thou hast not known me. Right. You see, um, I remember, man, sometimes you see some things happen to you, you know, that's Yahweh having you to give a testimony of what has happened. Yes. And in the 90s, you know, I used to drive taxi. Right. And um, I was held up by these three, three gunmen, you see. Uh -oh. But they took my money and so on. And um, you see, back then, you know, I didn't know anything about Yahweh. I was there calling upon Jesus, hey, help me, because back in them days, Doc, it's not a good thing when you hear a taxi man uh, got hold up by a by a gunman. And um, but now I know that this scripture here, what Yahweh is saying that. When you didn't know me, I am the one who was guiding and protecting you. Right. Because the spirit of Yahweh lives in every man, you see. This spirit of Yahweh is in them gunmen that held me up. It's in you, it's in me, and he orders everything. You see. Right. His purpose will stand. His purpose was not for me to go down that way. Right. You see, so that's why I'm here talking to you right now. Mm -hmm. You see, he said, I am Yahweh. Could you read it again for me, please? Isaiah 45, verse 5. Mm -hmm. I am Yahweh, and mm -hmm. there is none else. There's there none else. Elohim beside me. Mm -hmm. I girded thee, thou mm -hmm. dost not know me. And we know that that's girded is he's the one who is guide, he guides and protects you. When you didn't know him, when you're calling upon Lord God Jesus, Allah Buddha, mm -hmm. before coming to the truth, right? He guides and protects you. So now that you are in the truth, he still guides. His guidance is still here. You see, he's still guiding you and he's still protecting. You. And he's teaching. He's the only teacher, Yeshua the Messiah. You see, the true teacher. So he's still teaching you. Right. Okay, Doc. Get me 40, 46 and 5 now, Doc. Because, all right, read it, Doc. Isaiah 46 and 5. And 46 and 9 also. To whom will he liken me mm -hmm. and make me equal and compare me that we may be like? Right. So, who will you liken Yahweh? Because he said, there is no Elohim besides me. Right. That's who it. are you going to liken him unto? Because... Um, as soon as you're telling or explaining or exponing to someone about this truth, who is Yahshua? They're saying that, oh, Jehovah is the same as Lord, or Jehovah is the same as Yahweh, or Jesus is the same as Yahshua, Yahshua is the same as Jesus. No, there is no comparison. Yahweh is the creator of the universe. Yahshua is 
the Holy Spirit is the Savior. You see, Jesus does not mean that. You see, Yahshua Messiah, he is the Savior. Jesus does not mean that. Jesus Christ does not mean that. You see, and he's saving you from all of these erroneous. He's saving you from death, hell, and the grave. And he's saving you from, really saving you from his wrath. You see. As it said there in, um, okay, where is that? Is it the wrath of Yahweh? Um, what is it? Is, is that Isaiah? Is it Isaiah 8 and 19? Is it that? Isaiah 8 and 19, or Isaiah 8 and the wrath of Yahweh. It's talking about the wrath of Yahweh. Because we talk about Yahweh's love and his wrath. Listen, Yahweh's wrath is great as his love. You see. Right. So is it Isaiah 8 and 19? For the wrath of Yahweh. Oh boy. Anyway. Anyway. 46 and 9 order. Isaiah 46 and verse 9. Verse <clears throat> 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am Yahweh, and mm -hmm. there is none else. Mm -hmm. I am Yahweh, and there is none like me. You see how consistent Yahweh is? He said, I am Yahweh and there is none else. So there's no three. You see, it's one tabernacle. It is one tabernacle with three compartments. Yes, sir. Right. So it's Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, uh, could you get me the um the migratory pattern chart or the, the mosaic chart? It's Yahweh Elohim Yahshua, Yahweh pure spirit took on a super incorporeal form as Elohim and Yahweh took on a physical form we call Yahshua. It's just one spirit. He said, it's just one spirit, the unity of the spirit. You see? Right. It's Yahweh Elohim Yahshua. Right. Super incorporeal form. You can't understand anything about him in that form. And he took on a shape and form. Now you can see him in vision and understanding him in revelation. And he walked the earth plane in physical body, Yahshua. It's just one spirit, you see. Right, as it's there in Ephesians. All right, not getting ahead of ourselves. Right, so I am Yahweh, there is none else. You see, um, get me um, Matthew one twenty one back. Matthew one twenty one. No, um, just a minute now. No, the angel Gabriel went unto the woman and said, "You found favor with the woman, and you know the story." And you're going to have a son. You should name the son. Yahshua. You see. Right. Now, Joseph, our Bible translator said, Joseph, seeing his spouse pregnant. And he knows that he didn't have anything to do with this. Now, the scripture said, he was going to put her away privately. 
whatsoever you want to think of that. Because he said that, the scripture said he was going to put her away privately. Being a just man, he was going to put her away privately. Not, doesn't want to make a public. He didn't want everybody to be in partake of this. He was going to do it privately. Now here's Matthew 121. Could you read it for me, please? Here's the angel Gabriel having a conversation with him to also read. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now you see the name, names in the Hebrew. It has meaning. They have meaning. Now Yahshua means savior. Yahweh, he who causes to exist. Who exists and causes to exist. Yahshua, savior. So this name, Yahshua, she shall bring forth a son. Now you shall call his name Yahshua. For he shall save his people from their sin. You see? Right. Um, okay, Doc. Get me John 1 now, Doc. John 1, verse... 29. John 1, verse mm -hmm. 29. Mm -hmm. says, the next day, see it, Yahshua, John see it, Yahshua, mm -hmm. coming on him and said, Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh, mm -hmm. which taketh away the sin of the world. Right. So, this is the lamb of Yahweh. This lamb shall take away the sin. Did it, spell, did it spell S I N S or S I N? S I N. It spelled S I N. This is a singular. Yes, it which take it away the sin of the world because this sin was passed on all men. You see, when Adam, when he sinned in the garden, in Adam, all die. So through Yahshua the Messiah now, Yahshua the Messiah, he take it away, that sin. You see, that sin, well, it's not only Israel who had sinned because they had sins. Because Yahweh gave them the laws and ordinances to point to sin. So they have a whole lot of sins back there. But this sin that Yahshua takes it away, which he also he took away the sins that well, um, Israel did have also. It was from Adam. This sin was from Adam. You see that was that was upon all men. Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua the Messiah, he takes that away. You see, behold the Lamb of Yahweh, which taketh away the sin of the world. You see. Right. So this sin is no more. Uh, no more um, the Father. Our, our son can do anything out there and the father would pay for it, you see. Right, because Yahshua took away that sin. All right. Get me John 3, 16 now, Doc. John 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For Yahweh so loved the world that mm. he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Now, Yahweh gave his son, 
You see, this only, this only, this only begotten son, because every, every angel, every human being, every, I, I said it, every human being, every angel, Yahweh's son. But this one is the only, the only begotten. You see? This is the only begotten. This one can give you life, you see? This son, you have to come through this son to get life eternal. That whosoever believe in this son should not perish, but have everlasting life. So what is this son's name? You see, continue reading that. For Yahweh sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but mm -hmm. that the world through him might be saved. Right, continue. He that believeth on him is not condemned, mm -hmm. but he that believeth not is condemned already. No, if you believe in the Son of Yahweh, if you believe in the Son of Yahweh, you are not condemned. You see, there is no condemnation, you see, for you. Because what, Doc? Yes. Uh, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. You see that? Because you have not believed in the name of the only. Because they always say, you know, what's in a name? What's in a name? You know, do my like a delivery work out here. And I met this Christian lady. Ah, man, you're dwelling upon the name too much. You're dwelling upon the name too much, too much. So I use this scripture, you see, because Yahweh, Yahweh gave us the tools, you know, the law and the prophets. You do, and when she heard this scripture, because I said, all right then, could you quote John 3.16 for me? I know, you know that a little child can quote John 3.16. It's like a nursery rhyme. And she did it so well. She quoted. it. But what does 17, 18, 19 said? You see? Right. Right. Because you have not believed in the name of the only begotten son of Yahweh. No, the only begotten son of Yahweh is Yahshua. You see? And if you believe in the only begotten son of Yahweh, you will not call him Jesus because that's not his name. You see? His name is Yahshua. Continue reading from me, Lord. And this is the condemnation hmm? that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because mm -hmm. their deeds were evil. No. The deeds of men is so evil that you are going to tell me no. Yes, we know that. The name is Yahshua. We know that the name is Yahshua. But I prefer Jesus. I, I, I know, I know, I know that. I know that his name is. Um, and we know that there was no J back then. And we know that there's no J. And the evidence is so right in your face, in your face. And they disobey. They disobey. You see. But in Malachi, go back to Malachi 3. Malachi, what is it? Give me Malachi 2. Is it 2 and 1? 
Give me Malachi 2 and 1. Dan. Malachi 2 and 1. Right. And now, all ye priests, mm -hmm. this commandment is for you. Right. If you will not hear, mm -hmm. and if you will not lay to heart to give glory unto my name, mm -hmm. it's your host. I will even send a curse upon you, mm -hmm. and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already, no. because you do not lay to heart. No. Who talks like that? Yahweh said, I will. Now you see, oh, Yahweh declares the end from the beginning. Yahweh said, I will. And then he said, I do it already. Who talks like that? Only the one who declares the end from the beginning. You see. He said, if you will not lay to heart. Now, Yahweh knows the thoughts of men, you know. Before you start talking, Yahweh, you know, say, what coming out of your mouth is a lie. Saying Jesus is the Savior. You know it. But yet you, you tell the whole congregation about Jesus. Yahweh said, if you will not lay to heart, I will curse your blessing. Excuse me, Doc. Yes, Pardon. Doc. Thank you. Say so I do it already. Because you will not lay to you don't you're not laid to heart, you see. Right. Get Malachi 3 and verse 6 now that. Malachi 3 and 6. Mm -hmm. For I am Yahweh, I change not. You see that? <laughs> I am Yahweh, I change not. You see, I am Yahweh, I change not. He's the same loving Yahweh. He's our father. You see, right. But remember his wrath, you see. Earthquake, um, hailstone, hurricane, you see, right. You see, um, all the disasters, you know, that's Yahweh's right, you know. You <laughs> see. You know where that scripture is, that? For the right of Yahweh. Um, Romans. Is it Romans? Oh, it's the one that says about the children of disobedience. Come upon the children of this. Yes, yes, Doc. I think it is Second Testament. I'm not sure. Uh, we can check. Okay, Romans eight. Romans one and verse eight. Romans one and eight. Oh man, where is this thing? Romans one and eighteen. Okay, let me see. Romans 1, verse 18. Mm -hmm. oh, for the wrath of Yahweh is revealed from heaven mm -hmm. against all unrighteousness of men mm -hmm. who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So, yeah. you see, them big pastors, the whole other big pastors up there in the United States, England, um, Jamaica here, we have a whole lot. That, we have a whole lot down here. And they know the truth. The truth is Yahweh Elohim through his son Yahshua. You see. Who holds the truth in unrighteousness. Continue reading that. In unrighteousness. Uh, because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. Mm -hmm. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. So Yahweh showed it unto the Israelites. He showed it unto them back then at Mount Sinai, you see. He showed it to them. Read. For the invisible things of him from mm -hmm. the creation of the world are clearly seen. Right. 
being understood by the things that are made. So he has given us um, the things that are made, the invisible things. So you know that an atom is a proton, a neutron, an electron. Right. You see, this, those things are invisible to the naked eye. A cell is a nucleus, a nucleolus, a cell body. You see, so the things that are made, he made man in his image after his likeness. You have a head cavity, a chest cavity, abdominal cavity. You see, it's testifying of him, Yahshua, the Messiah. Yahweh Elohim, Yahshua. These three are one, you see. Right, it's just one. The tabernacle is a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. It's testifying of Yahshua, the Messiah, you see. You see, all things is testifying of him. Everything that he creates is testifying of him. The earth is a core, a mantle, and a cross, you see. Right. right. So it, everything is testifying of him, Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. All praise and honor. It's always a privilege to have. Thank you, Yahshua for giving me the opportunity to open my mouth and you speak through, you see. Thank you, Yashua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Byron Crary. Okay, our second and final speaker will be the Dean of the Spanish Town Branch, Dr. Dana Mitchell. Praise Yashua, everyone. Mm -hmm. I must say I did enjoy the testimonies of a previous speaker expounding on what Yahshua has revealed in his heart since it's in order this great, stupendous panoramic vision and revelation that was given to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. This vision and revelation is for the saving of mankind's soul. Without a prophetic vision, the people perish. And this is what they ask for in the national anthem. Give us vision lest we perish. So Yahweh who is spirit, John 4, 24 says Yahweh is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him. But just who or what is spirit? Spirit is the ultimate source, the infinite and immaculate substance is the limits and is the bounds of everything. Spirit is the nine divine principal attributes. Yahweh, he who causes to exist a self-existing independent deity, the sum total of everything, the all in all. He is the father of Yahshua, the only begotten son of Yahweh, who is the savior. So you have Yahweh being the generator, Adam being the degenerator, and Yahshua is the regenerator. Mm -hmm. So there was a war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought. And that and Yahweh. What was that? To Michael cast him out. And Yahshua said in Luke 10, verse 18. Let's have Luke 10, 18. He saw Lucifer for there in Ezekiel. He said, Oh, are thou fallen from heaven, or Lucifer? Son of the morning. And Yahshua answered. Yahshua answered that scripture and said, like lightning. You can have it, have it read. Look, either 10, 18 or 18, 10. So um, could you read that scripture? Luke 10, verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So Yahshua said, I beheld. Satan like lightning fall from heaven. Because over there in the book of Isaac, he said, Oh, I don't fall in, oh, Lucifer, oh, son of the morning. So he was cast out. And over there, in the, could you please read Jude 1 and 6? He said, The angels that kept not their first estate. Jude 1, Jude is one book, so verse 6. Jude. Okay. Repeat that, Doc. 
Jude 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So the angels that kept not their estate. So Yahweh, it has a purpose and a pattern and a plan unto salvation. When you go to Revelation 12, Revelation 12 and 5, okay. or 4, it says his tail drew a third part. Revelation 12 and 4. And his tail drew his the tail third part yes. of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. So you see, he said his tail drew a third part. So you have T-A-I-L and you have T-A-L-E. Now what is going on in the world? The devil is telling a story. And Yahweh said, he are of your fathers, the devil. The lust of your fathers, he will do. He was a liar from the beginning and about not in the truth because he's the father of lies. So you have a T-A-I-L and you have a T-A-L-E, which is a story he's telling the people. So his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and in prophecy star can represent angels star can represent sons or souls so in this case it still drew a third part of the stars of the angels and it says Yahshua said he saw Lucifer for like lightning to squeak. So you can imagine that was a quick knockout when um Yahweh just told Michael, get rid of him and Daniel 12 warrior angel. Daniel 12 and 1 shall stand up as a warrior angel. So Gabriel being the messenger and Michael is the warrior angel. In Revelation 12, we're in heaven. Michael, didn't he say that? And his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his place was no more found in heaven. So he was cast out of heaven. Well, um, one, please. I'm, I'm sorry, you're breaking up a little bit. Are, are you near the mic? Daniel, I said, I said Daniel 12 and 1. Okay. And at that time shall Michael stand up that the great prince would stand it for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to the same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered every one that shall be found written in the book and many of oh. them okay thank you doc i don't know if you're not hearing or what but um so to put we read that scripture to confirm that michael is the warrior angel so he was the one who cast um that that this Lucifer and his host out of heaven. So he says, when he was cast out, he and his host, his tail drew a third part. We can read Revelation 12 and 4 now, where he says, his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven. Revelation 12, verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. All right, so it says his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. So verse 9 and 10 now is going to tell us that after the devil is cast out, then it is going to tell you that we have resurrection, just like when we go out in the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. He that believe it not is damned. So verse 9 and 10 now. So they, they, and the bread they got salvation when that serpent was cast. And the great dragon was you cast can read out. That. And the great dragon was cast out, 
that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Mm -hmm. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength. And the so he says, so, so, so he says, follow this carefully now. So after the devil is cast out, he said, no, is come salvation. So you cannot have salvation until that devil is cast out. And that's why in Job 1 and 6, a day, there was a day when the sons of Yahweh gathered and Satan found himself in the presence. And Yahweh asked him, where are you coming from? Yahweh knew where he was coming from. Yahweh said, where are you coming in Job 1 and 6? And he said, if I'm going to and fro in the earth and from right. walking up and down in it. Man is taken from the dust of the earth so that be cast out by the preaching of it's not finished can you hear me yes you sound good you're fine now thank you okay thank you continue verse 10 and the kingdom of our elohim and the power of yashua the messiah for the king, the, read that correctly now. He said, "The kingdom of his of our Elohim, and and the power of Yahshua the Messiah. That's the power of the resurrection and the power of the Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Which so the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our Elohim day and night. Day and night. Read on." And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And very by the important, blood. very important. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Because John the Revelator, remember Moses seen from the end to the beginning. John is seen from the, Moses is seen from the beginning to the end. John is seen from the end to the beginning. When Yahshua the Messiah shed his blood on that cross, his blood that's why he had his hands up in the air, making that why for those in heaven and his feet to the earth and his head is in heaven. For those in heaven, and notice he's going to say, there's a scripture, Revelation, Revelation 5 and 6, which, that the, we are going to read that one, which says, worthy is the lamb. And, he's, and one scripture says, it looks as if a lamb had been slain, which is the same Revelation, the fifth chapter, which we are going to get afterwards. But read, finish reading this first. Half. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Finish reading. Yes. And by the word of their testimony. Very important. Overcame the devil. Overcame. You're breaking up now. By the blood of the Lamb and by the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And they loved not their lives unto the death. At the end of verse 11. Okay, thank you. So they overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb. So read Revelation 5 and 6 now. Revelation 5 and 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts. That's what you want? Yes, continue. And, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. So the lamb of Yahweh, stick up in the I'll be interrupting you. So the lamb of Yahweh, who was slain from before the foundation of the world. That is Yahshua who divested himself of, the, of his glory and took up the form of a servant. So that's the Lamb of Yahweh. Read on. Read on, Doc. And I beheld and lo, before the throne and the four living creatures and the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns, and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of Yahweh, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having 
every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which was the prayers of, of, of the sons. And they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to Yahweh by the blood, one of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Jump down to verse 12, Doc, please. Verse 12. Very good scripture. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches. Seven and riches. things. Seven things. Let us start again. Worthy is the lamb. And it's 10,000 times 10,000 times 10,000 angels. Thousands of angels who declare this. Worthy is the lamb. You can you imagine you are in a classroom of students and they are making noise. Just imagine it says 10,000 times 10,000. And thousands of thousands of angels shouted this at once. Worthy is the lamb. Because it is the blood of the lamb that permits sin without the shedding of the blood of Yahshua, the lamb of Yahweh is a worthy lamb. John Simon, he said, behold, the lamb of Yahweh that take it away the sin of the world. Read on that. And behold, I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the living creatures and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Say with Hallelujah. the voice. You heard that number? 10,000 times 10,000. <laughs> and thousands of thousands. That's Saying all, right. all at once. Saying with Read the right voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Worthy is the lamb. That's right. That's a song. That was slain to receive power slain. and riches. Yes. That's and two. Wisdom. Three. And strength for honor Simon. and glory Six. and blessing and blessings. Hallelujah. Seven. I love that. Hallelujah. Seven. I let the department thousands of thousands times ten thousand saying all that one worthy is the lamb. He's a worthy lamb. Wow. Why is it Yahweh is saying this? All the other lambs were worthless. He is the only worthy lamb because they were all types and shadow. They could not. It is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. Only one man, one worthy lamb. Out of all those lambs, one worthy lamb. <laughs> this is greatness, brethren. One worthy lamb. And that's Yahshua the Messiah. And that's what he said. Behold, when John signed, in verse 129, Behold the Lamb of Yahweh that take it, the sin of the world. So he is, John is declaring that this is the worthy Lamb. It was never said of any other Lamb that were offered back there. That they were the Lamb of Yahweh that take it. And verse 36, it is repeated. The Lamb of Yahweh that take it away, the sin of the world. Because Adam brought it down into degradation and Yahshua paid the price. So he's a worthy lamb. Without the shedding of Yahshua's blood, there is no remission of sin. So when all this chaos in heaven, and Daniel and, and the angel Michael in Daniel 12 chapter had to stand up and he fought, and those demons were cast out into the unfinished earth. Yahshua is the one who brought redemption. He bought us back. He paid the price with his own life and with his blood. He bought us back to make salvation a gift and free. And when that serpent was cast out, read Job 1 and 6, um, Matthew 12, 43. Or Job 2 and 1. Can you hear me, Doc? Yes, you're sounding very fine. Okay, thank you. So Job 1, when Yahweh asked the devil where he was coming from. Yeah. Now, so, there, now there was a day when the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Yahweh and Satan came along, came also among them. And Yahweh said unto Satan, whence comest thou? Then Satan answered Yahweh and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And Yahweh said unto Satan, 
hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that affaireth Elohim and eschewth evil? Then Satan answered Yahweh and said unto him, The Job fear Elohim for naught? Hast thou made, has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But poor okay, thank you, Doc. Thank you. So Job, so Satan was bringing that conversation to Yahweh about Job. And in Job 19.25, Job didn't fail, Yahshua. Job said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. The worm destroyed this body, yet in my spirit I shall see Yahweh Elohim at the later, later day standing up on the earth. Mm -hmm. Job delivered. Job delivered. He said, I know that my, if you read Job 19 20, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Can you imagine? Yes. And he's saying, Worm is destroying this body. Yet in my spirit, I shall see Yahweh Elohim Yahshua. So when that devil was cast out, he was up and down in the earth plane, going in and out of man. Man is taken from the dust of the earth. And it, when you read um, Matthew 12, 43, it says when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. Can you read that, please? Matthew, Matthew 12, 12, 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, <clears throat> I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first so you see the condition that a soul can deteriorate a soul can be redeemed a soul can die and a soul can live that's why Yahshua came on this team he said awake awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead so spirit can go in and out of, of souls and just like when Yahshua, the, the demon was in the man back then, I think it's Matthew 10 or Martin, and Yahshua drove them out into the swine. And just like fear on his oath, I think it's Matthew 8, 31. Try that. And when Yahshua cast them out, they ran into the pigs, and the pigs ran down into the water, just like fear on his oath, ran down into the water. And the world today yes, running sir. down into the yes, running down into, into the water. So I show you that Yahshua cast those spirit out of out of the man. Read it, Doc. So the devils besought him, saying, That's Matthew 8, 31. If read 30. Have, read 30. And there was a good way of 28. From, 28. And when he was come to the other side. Into the country of Gershon Senes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. All right, stick up in. So, all those demons, um, they, they were demoted, they lost their estate that were cast out. When people say they were cast out into the earth, they are cast out into the earth plane, yes, in this plane. But they take up abode in souls. And that's why we have to go in all the world and preach the gospel. To cast out these demons by the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. Read on. Verse 29. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Yahshua, thou son of Yahweh? Art thou come either to torment us before the time. And there was a good way off from them and heard of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. 
And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. You see, you see, that's where you lose the dog. And they like to put DD behind their name, Reverend DD. You lose the dog just like Pharaoh. Um, we lose Pharaoh at the water and those pigs. You see that, that demon, he likes to run into the water. But Yahshua is the living water. It is not about physical water washing away sin. Water cannot wash away sin. It is the blood of Yahshua that cleanses us from all sin. And, we, and through the preaching of the gospel, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is death, burial, resurrection, ascension, blood, water, spirit, 40 in the name of Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. So you see, spirit can go in and out. Because Job 32 and 8, Yahweh says, there is a spirit in man. So there is a good spirit and there is a bad spirit. So he says, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that this man lived. So just like how you are breathing from a natural standpoint, you expire, you're inspired. So you are inspired by the teaching or the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua. That's why Yahshua said, know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But some listen to the lies of John 8, 44. Ye are of your father's the devil. The lust of him ye will do. He was a liar from the beginning, promoting false names and false doctrine. He was a liar from the beginning. Remember, Yeshua says, know the truth, you know, and the truth shall make us free. But he's saying the devil is a liar from the beginning about not in the truth, for the, he is the father of lies. So it's two mysteries in operation, the mystery of righteousness and the mystery of unrighteousness. So for the gospel to take residence in a man, the demons have to be cast out. You cannot negotiate with a demon. That's the reason why Yahweh said they kept not their estate. Immediately, once they, they started to rebel against Yahweh, Yahweh kicked them out and said he reserved them unto fire and he stalled you a third part. So back there in, in the book of, um, and Yahshua is consuming that demon with the sword. It's not a physical Warfare. The, back there, remember, we started out with the war in heaven. He says in Corinthians, the weapon of our warfare, it is not carnal, but it is mighty to the pulling door. I don't know if you know where to find that scripture. To the pull, because it started with the war in heaven, um, to the pulling down of strongholds. And that's what he says over there. I think it's first Corinthians 10 and 4. And then we go to Hebrews, where the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful and sharper than any twig sword. So, but there, it started out with a spiritual warfare. It's still a spiritual warfare. Our second Corinthians, try that. 10 and 4. The weapon of our warfare is not carnal now. The weapon of our warfare is not carnal. Second Corinthians 10 and 4. For the weapon, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Elohim to the pulling down of strongholds of rebels, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh and bringeth into captivity every thought to the immediate obedience of the Messiah. You see, so the preaching of the gospel is effective in a man who receives Yahshua, bringing in every thought to the obedience of Yahshua the Messiah. That's why Yahshua said, I leave my peace with you my peace I give unto you. And that is a part of the kingdom. It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And once you have Yeshua, you cannot be deceived. And I stand that I stand my grounds when I say that. Even naturally, people tell you something, the Holy Spirit tell you. You know, that's a lie. That couldn't be true. You're, I stand my grounds to that. I'm holding on to it. And I'm, I am adamant. If you have Yeshua, you cannot be deceived. Once you ask Yeshua and put things to Yeshua, you cannot be deceived. So you see, and that's why Yahweh says, um, the devil is a liar from the beginning. He abode, he's not abiding in the truth. He's the father of lies and he's a predator seeking whom he can devour. All right. So the word, so Yahshua is using the war of words are the words of war now against that devil, which is the preaching of the gospel. Because the, 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 every time we mention the resurrection, it's a pain to that serpent. So he's saying in Hebrews now that the word of Yahweh Hebrews 4 and 12. The word of Yahweh is sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4 verse 12. Yes. 
For the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing evil to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrows, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. So everything you do, you're always discerning the intent. Why, 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 what's the reason for that? He's a discerner of the heart and the intent. Yeah. So the word of Yahweh is strong and it's, it's powerful. So this is the living word who we introduce to you as Yahshua and sharper than any two-edged sword. So it's, so the weapon, that's the weapon of warfare, which is the preaching of the gospel in the name of Yahweh Elohim Yahshua. That is our sword that we are using. And it's the same sword Michael was using, but it's the same sword we are using today. So we're going to just backtrack a little to show where his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven, which is a third of infinity. A third of infinity because um, it's an innumerable company of angels, but man is finite. So Yahshua has to give you a figure to work with. Just like he said, thousands, ten thousands of thousands times ten thousand of thousands. So you know, he gone into infinity right there. Right. So his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven. And that's why back there in Exodus, in the law, um, when they build the golden calf, 3,000 fell. So Yahweh is a true mathematician. He can subtract. That's a subtraction. Yeah. He subtracted 3,000 souls. In Zechariah 13, verse 8, let's have this one read. We don't have time to read all the scriptures. Zechariah 13, to the law and to the testimony. Zechariah 13 and 8 and 9. It says two-thirds shall die. Two-thirds of the earth. Read that for me. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, Yahweh is my Elohim. Isn't that the same thing we are saying now? Yahweh is our Elohim and Yahweh is claiming us to be his people. You are the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. And we say, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that is Yahshua that cometh in the name of Yahweh. Those are the things we are saying. So he said two-thirds. I'm going to cut off now because two thirds are already in heaven. So he's redeeming a third from the earth to fill that void in his kingdom, which is really a third of infinity because it is still a new innumerable company of angels. So a third is going to pass through the fire at Pentecost. Any man that come must believe that he is Yahshua and he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. He said he's going to change your vi our vile bodies to be fashioned unto his glorious body. So you're going to pass, you are pass, being passed through that fire at Pentecost now. So if you receive your Pentecost, you are passed through that fire. You are being passed through that fire. That's what he said. Two thirds of the earth shall die and a third shall pass through the fire at Pentecost. And he's taking up a third now to fill that void. So in Acts, in Acts, in Acts 2, I think it's 41, that day he added back 3,000. So he subtracted he predicated, he made a prophecy about the, two, the third. He said his back there is tail to a third part. So we're tracking the third. Back there, he, he subtracted 3,000. Why wasn't it 1,000 or 2,500 or 3,100? It was a, a fixed figure, 3,000 souls. So at Pentecost, he's adding back because it's a principle. Read on, please. Acts 7, Acts 2. Acts 2, 41. Is it 41. Yes. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Yes, 3,000 souls were added. You see, Yahweh is the greatest mathematician. He subtracted and always added 3,000, which is one upon three, which is a principle. 
And oh, you know, it's an innumerable company of angels. When you read um, Hebrews 12, he said, we are come to heavenly Jerusalem. Read Hebrews 12, 18 and down to 22, please. And Revelation, it is also in Revelation 7, verse 9, where it says, um, after this I be an innumerable company of time. Hebrews 12, verse 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living Elohim, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. It says, very good. And it says, you have come to know heavenly Jerusalem, not geographical Jerusalem, but Jerusalem from above, which is the mother of us all, which is Yahweh Elohim, Yahshua and to an innumerable company of angels. So that's where we are now, um, going over into the sabbatical age. We are now in the kingdom of immortality, preaching from Pentecost, that he who only who had immortality dwelling in the light, which no man can approach to, because we are born again. When we are born again in Yahshua, when the question was asked of the seven brothers who had the one wife, and they all died, and she died, they asked, Yahshua, in the resurrection, whose wife will she be? Yahshua says, in the resurrection, there's neither marriage or giving in marriage, but you will be like the angels. Right. So when he told Nicodemus that we had to be born from above, this time we are born as angels. We are born from above, spiritually and psychologically. So we have to find this peace, joy, and happiness, this rest in Yahshua, because he has given it to us, so we have to receive it. Not the peace that the world is giving, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. No man can deny you of this. No man can take away Yahshua from us. So if you know what you are about and keep your eyes, Yahshua said, look unto me and be ye saved. All ye ends of the earth. So we are looking unto Yahshua. There is hope. There is redemption. There is forgiveness of sin. It's only mankind don't forgive people, you know. It's only mankind bring up false accusations. Yahshua said in Acts 17, 28, 31 and down, he said he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man who we are today. You see, if you judge people in righteousness, it will tell you if it is Yahshua who is in operation. But people try to judge people in unrighteousness. That is not Yahshua. Yahshua judged the world. He's a righteous judge. What does that mean? When he judged the world in righteousness, he's looking at how much righteousness is in you. You know what the devil is looking for? How much bad things you have done and how much wrong things you have done, which Yahshua has long forgiven you about. The devil is the dragon dragging on the old covenant into the new covenant and claiming that there is no forgiveness for you. That's what they do. But Yahshua is the Lamb of Yahweh that takes away the sin of the world. Look unto him. Look unto Yahshua. Be steadfast. Don't look to the left or to the right. Be steadfast and keep your eyes on Yahshua. Because there are so many distractions in the world. Your family member, your friends, people around you to just to distract you. So Yahshua is looking for how much righteousness. And the root word of righteousness is to be right. Looking unto Yahshua and be he saved all the ends of the earth. And that's Isaiah. I think it's Isaiah 45 and 5. Uh, Isaiah 45, 22, somewhere there. Can you read that one, please? Isaiah 45, 22. Isaiah 45, verse 22. Look unto me, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am Yahweh, and there is none else. So he is a savior. So look unto Yahshua, and be he saved all the ends of the earth. You know, one day I was speaking to a sister in New York, Sally. And as he was telling her about Yahshua, and she said, Donna, just keep on, keep your eyes on Yahshua. You are going to be surprised 
who will make it from who will not make it. Keep your right. eyes on Yashua. And she has a point. And that's all she said to me when I was telling her about Yashua. That's Bonnie's sister. She said, you, are, you will be surprised. Brethren, don't try to fight any mad Adam and devil. Keep, keep your eyes on Yashua. And you let us all be focused on him. Because Yahshua is the one who paid the price. Yahshua is the one who has the final decision and the ultimate say about anyone and, and a soul salvation. That's why it doesn't matter what pandemic or not, we have to go it, go it, go out in the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that is believe it and is baptized to show that the gospel is the true baptism. That's what we looked at today in class. He that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believe it not shall be damned. So we have a sal a savior. And that's why Miriam sang this song and say, Yah is our strength. And he has become our salvation. That is great, you know. He has become our savior. He mediates on our behalf. So um, we are we are go we are in this, we are going over to the sabbatical rest. We are in the kingdom, we are in the immortality now, going over into the sabbatical rest. But I hope my hope is for Israel that they might be saved. And I pray that they might be saved. And consider this. Yahweh is no respect of any man persona. The same requirement for one, the same requirement for all. And we invite you to come again, study with us, learn all you possibly can. So that third, you no, know, we move from the third and we move from the two thirds. We are now in the infinity putting the angels together, those, and that's Thessalonians 1 and 7. That's a good scripture, or the one that they call the rapture. You'll be caught up together with him. But Thessalonians, you can read that for the final scripture. Um, Yahshua shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. So that is what we are waiting on now. So we, the, the immortality began from Yahshua breathed on us on the day of Pentecost. In John 20, verse 22, we say, He breathed on them and said, Receive ye the gift of the Holy Spirit. You have we have received of his immortal spirit, but we have not received of that body as yet. He's going to change that vile body. That is that mortal man putting on immortality. That mortal man that lived 930 years in Adam. That mortal man is going to put on. That's what First Corinthians says. So he has the plan, and that is the gist of everything so far. The war that started and salvation. We have redemption to the blood of Yahshua. So we tell the story of what happened. So um, Timothy is a good scripture to go with this. Great is the mystery of righteousness. Just to confirm that he has witnessed his Second Timothy 3.16. But we're not going to read that one. Great is the mystery of holiness. He who was manifested in the flesh, seen of angels, receive up into glory, telling of the round trip that he made and whatever he did to redeem mankind. He paid the price. So these are witnesses that we are bringing forth to show that there is no other savior but Yahshua the Messiah. All right, just read that one scripture. Second Thessalonians. Thessalonians. One and seven. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When Yahshua the Messiah shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh and that obey not the gospel of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of Yahweh and from the glory of his power when he shall come to be glorified in his sons and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore, when he says, when he come to be glorified, you see how great that is? When he, so it's an immortal glorification, an eternal glorification, when he come to be glorified in his son which began from the day of Pentecost. So at the universal revelation, he says he's going to change his vile bodies to be fashioned unto his glorious body. So in or out of a physical body, can no one has received that body as yet. So in or out of a physical body. So they are the altar crying, how oh long, how oh long? How oh long, but they don't have any physical body. But they without us will not be made perfect. So it is one glorification, just like when the sun is risen. One 
sunshine on the entire earth plain. It is one glorification because Yasha went back and he preached those spirits in prison who were disobedient. But they received Pentecost. They begin to receive the light and the immortality. It began from Pentecost to resuscitate those dead souls. That's why it says, she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Right. Then Yahshua came and said, I am the resurrection and the life. Why would you need a resurrector or a resurrection if you weren't dead? He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Yes, I believe. So there is hope. Don't take away any man hope. There is hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. So that's what we are relating on now. Yahshua to be. And I tell you, it is very close because we are seeing the signs of the time that it is very close. So right now we are in the immortality, receiving of his immortal spirit. That is 1 Corinthians 15, 53 says, this mortal must put on immortality. Right. So this mortal must put on immortality. So when Adam is like the, the, like Adam had the egg and Yahshua had the sperm. So Yahshua is the one who is fertilizing that egg to give us that immortality. Because it's a spiritual rebirth. He only, he is the only angel who can procreate. That's why he speaks of his philopogenitiveness. His philopogenitiveness. Genitiveness is love for his offspring. It's a beautiful story. Let us let us give Yahshua the glory and let us meditate upon these things and let us find the peace of Yahshua in our souls. Let us um, continue with the grace that was given to us. Yahshua said it in I peep my peace, I leave with you. But he gave us the peace, the peace, but you have to receive it. Yes. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That is the kingdom given. The kingdom, he gave the kingdom. But they're, they're asking that thy kingdom will come, but he gave the kingdom. My peace I leave with you. Not as the peace that the world is giving. But to find peace in Yahshua, it's a great thing, brethren. It's a wonderful thing, this joy, this happiness in Yahshua. To be able to be taken to this height or another height when you're speaking of these things pertaining to the kingdom of Yahshua. And this is when he said that day the living water will run out of Jerusalem. That's what he said in Amos prophecy. Um, the same three days, three nights. He said that day, the living water will go out of Jerusalem. Yahshua is this living water. That day of the feast, he stood and he cried. He said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And yes. out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And thus he, speak of, he spoke of the Holy Spirit. He says, the ear tried words as the mouth tasted me. Live your life in such a way that you... In the night, I get up, I listen to, I was on the program early this morning listening to Dr. Terry Wells. I'm in my bed, I sleep and wake, I listening, I communicating, I talking to Yahshua. Live your life in such a way that you are surrounded by Yahshua. You are, you, you, are, you are engaged by the Holy Spirit. You can have a communication so you can go in this. <coughs> and these are, this is what gives you stability. That you don't become accuser of the brethren. And you're not looking down that road in confusion and chaos. But you find peace. Because no war can be victorious. Victorious. War, you don't fight war to win. You use peace. That's what Yahshua used to conquer the world. His peace. His joy. His happiness. The only time you can be victorious. You see Israel fighting with Ammon. Who you think will win? They, they can, no, war cannot bring victory. They believe that. But we know what gives us victory is the peace of Yahshua. Give us victory. Peace in Yahshua. Give us victory over the world. Because the world is full of chaos. Anyhow. So, brethren, we invite you. Meditate upon these things. Let the words of your mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in the sight of Yahshua, our Savior and our Redeemer. Colossians 1 verse 26. Even the mystery, which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now has been made manifested to his sons, to whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches of this glory of this mystery among the nations. Who is Yahshua the Messiah in us, our only hope of glory? 
whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Yahshua the Messiah. All praises go unto Yahweh Elohim and his son Yahshua. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Dr. Donna Mitchell. And we have now come to the, we have now come to the end of another lecture. Um, anyone with any question that will be directed after the doxology? Is there any announcement? All right. On behalf of the Institute, we thank you all for joining us online. And we hope that you come again and study with us. Please let us stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and all times, let us all say, Hallelujah. 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 Praise Yahshua. Worthy is the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, I want to play some. Hey, Bonnie, how are you doing? Wonderful. Yeah, big up everybody down in our court there, man. Thank you, I will. Well, Praise yeah. Yashua, Bonnie. It was a beautiful, beautiful class. Thank you. I, I didn't hear you, Donna. I said, Praise Yashua. Praise Yashua, eternally. Eternally. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, we're doing good. And it sounds like you guys are doing good. That's wonderful. Yes, we are doing great. Continue, Byron. Hey, Hyacinth, how are you doing? Very good. I'm doing, wonder I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. How about yourself? Me good, man. Me good, too. <laughs> hey, once we are in Yashua, it'll keep us in, a per in peace. In a perfect mind, with a perfect mind. And, it it sure. <laughs> hmm. and give him all the glory. All right. Hallelujah. Yep. And 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 Worthy. Mm hmm. 